QuickBooks Online 2021, common errors with and when using account numbers. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online 2021. Common errors when using and adding account numbers to the chart of accounts. Now remember that adding account numbers to the chart of accounts can give us more control over what the look and feel of the chart of accounts as well as the financial statements will look like, but that added level of control does come with a cost. We need to be careful to avoid problems when adding the account. So let's think about the common problems that could be in place when we add account numbers to our chart of accounts. And then of course, how we can avoid them when we're setting up our chart of accounts. So first we have the order of the accounts not lining up with account types. Meaning if you set up your chart of accounts, remember that they're gonna be in order primarily by account type, which you can basically think of most basically as the balance sheet on top of the income statement. In other words, assets, liabilities, and equity type of accounts, then income and expense type of accounts, and then more categorized, more detailed categorized in, in those, those major groupings. It has to be in that order because that's going to be the order of the financial statements, balance sheet, and then the income statement. So if you put in account numbers, you got to make sure that they line up to that ordering of the accounts. Otherwise, the account numbers will not make any sense and they will, they will detract <laughs> from uh, from the reporting and the data input rather than helping to increase your ability to report and enter data more quickly. So not providing enough room between account numbers to add new accounts. So it's, it's tempting when you put in account numbers to just say, hey, here's my list of accounts. Possibly you have a different number or starting number for each group. For example, assets starting with a one, liabilities with a two and three for equity and so on. But then many times people will just basically put the accounts right next to each other. So for example, the asset account for cash is 101 and then the accounts receivable is 102 and then the other current asset account is 103 and so on and so forth. The problem with that is that if you add another checking account in the future, then you have no room to put the account number between the account 101 and 102 and you start doing things like you need to make that 101.5 or something like that. And that's a problem because you wanna make sure that you can expand into the future. If you have to revamp your whole account number system, whenever you add new accounts or as you grow, you're defeating the purpose of the account numbers. So you gotta make sure that you're, you're adding enough, enough room and, and thinking about the future where you might have more accounts that you're gonna be adding into. Not adding account numbers at all. So a lot of times if you're using the account numbers, and then you want to make sure you're using the account numbers. Therefore, when you add another account, when you do something different, uh, then and you, and you add another account to the system, you have the option of adding the account number. And sometimes people just don't, just no account numbers added. And now you've got a system where you have account numbers turned on, you're using them, but some accounts do not have account numbers. And then once again, if you do that a lot, that will defeat the purpose of having the account numbers in the first place. So let's just consider this uh, in a little bit more detail. Let's jump on over to our uh, QuickBooks. So we here we are in our QuickBooks online. We're in our account numbers practice file. We're gonna go on down to the accounting. So we set up our QuickBooks file. We set up our chart of accounts. We added the account numbers by going to the cog up top. We went then to the accounting and uh, settings. We then went to the advanced tab in order to turn on the account numbers within the advanced tab, we enabled the account numbers. And then we added the account numbers here and we added them kind of in order. And that's gonna be one of the things that, uh, that we wanna consider. I'm gonna close up the hamburger. So remember it's in order by type and that means it's gonna be an order of assets and then liabilities, then equity, and then income and expense. And in more detail, the assets will be in order by liquidity, bank account, accounts receivable, and so on in this type of order. If you were to order your account numbers in some order different than that, then uh, it defeats the purpose of the account number. So for example, if I went down here and I said that this account number 262500, uh, if I was to make that account, for example, editing that account and uh, make this number number one, one one uh, five and i was to save that then that would defeat the pers purpose of the account numbers because you, you would have it then uh now it's grouped up here at the top of the expenses it's still ordered by expenses in terms of the account type and you might say well i could fix that i can order it by the account number and if i order it by the account number then you've got this account right there there it is but that doesn't make any sense because now you got this expense account 
this account type and the expenses in the 100s area. The accounts that start with one area, I should say. And that doesn't make any sense because when you make the actual reports, it's going to be in the format of the balance sheet grouping together assets, liabilities, and equity, and then the income statement, income and expense. So although you can then sort by this number over here, this is still going to cause you a problem. It doesn't make any sense because when you create the financial statements, it shouldn't be starting with a one, it should be starting with a six. So then you, so you kind of want to keep it ordered by type, in other words, and then I'm going to, I'm going to re refix this one and put this one down at the bottom. We'll put this one at, go back on over, hold on a second. This one is the expense account that I put with a one, this one. Let's put that back down. I'm going to hit the edit button on that one. And I can't, I'm not sure exactly what I called it. I was like six, six, two, five, I think. And then we'll save that. And then, so that means when you add the account numbers, it's got to kind of be in alignment. It's got to kind of make sense in terms of the chart of accounts that you have. It also makes it a little bit more difficult when you create accounts like as you're going. So for example, if I was to create an account as I, uh, enter an expense form, it's a, it might be a little bit more difficult to figure out what the account I want to pick up because I got to make sure that I pick up the account number too as I add the account. So for example, if I add, a, let's add another tab, I'm going to right click up top, duplicate the tab. And let's say I'm going to say I'm going to have another account, another new, and I'm going to make an expense type of form. Let's say we're going to add an expense type of form. And it's going to be a decrease to the checking account. And we're going to call this, it's going to be from vendor. We'll just call it vendor two. So I'm going to say this is from vendor two tab. And we'll add that one vendor two. And then I'm going to go down here and say that the category, I'm going to add a new category. I'm just going to call it test category. This is going to be an expense test expense just to, to test it out. And then I'm going to say it's an expense type of account. I'll keep it in the advertising, but the name is test expense. Now note, it's a little difficult to know the number here. I don't know what the number is because I don't have my chart of accounts kind of in front of me. So I can't really see, you know, the number. So oftentimes when you're just adding a new account, you just won't put a number here. And that's for, you know, it's typical to do that and say, I'm not going to deal with the number and then just add this account. And if I was to put like 100 in that, in that amount, then I would add something. Now I've added an account and I didn't put an account number with it. And that causes problems. One way you can check the account number as you add a new account is before you add the account, hit the drop down and look at your expense accounts and then think about the number that you want to be adding when you add the new account, if you're using a form and then go back in, create the account with the number in your mind as you go. But if I add this account, then if I, if I say save it and close it, then now if i go back to my my chart of accounts now i've got this account in there with no number in it so i'm going to scroll down and say that we have our account numbers turned on but i've got this account down here with no number in it and that's typical to do when people are rushing the data input uh, so you want to consider again what what should the number be where do i want it to line up it's a little bit more difficult when you do that data input but it gives you that more control meaning uh, you know if i have an expense account that i'm adding then I have to think not only that it's an expense account that's going to be in the expense category, which is just going to be an order by alphabetical order, but also what's the account number? Where do I want it to land? Where do I want it to lie with respect to the other expense account? Now, the other common problem, like if I was to add this account and say, ah, oh, well, I'll just put it after the last one. I'll just put it after the last one. That one is 62500. So let's make, let's make this one. I'll just add the account number and make it 62501, 62501. Now that's a problem because now I have these right next to each other. They're right. Like what if I wanted an account like right between those two, I can't do it. Right. I'd have to, even though I have five, five digit numbers, I would still have to call this uh six, two, five, Oh, one point five or something like that in order to squeeze an account bump between those two. So when you're in the expense areas, you might not, that might not be as big of a problem, but but it's still not something you want to do. I have all this room down here. That's the point of having the room. So when I make this new account, I shouldn't be calling it, you know, one account up. I should be saying, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to call it at least, you know, I would say at least 10 numbers in between that we can have, we can have that there. And then if I made a sub account or something like that, that's when I might want to be a little bit more restrictive in, in the, the numbering of the accounts. Meaning if I made another account, that's a sub account of this one, I might want to call it six, two, five, one, 
one or one two or then have a much smaller grouping of distinguished dis, uh, you know distinction between the account so those are those are some of the common errors so if you have a nice broad like uh, five digit account numbers and then you group your account numbers by basically you know assets starting with a one liabilities with a two equity with a three uh, four for sales and so on and then you leave a lot of space between each of each of the accounts that you're setting up that means that you every time you add a new account in the future you got you got a lot of room to grow your your chart of accounts is not going to become too restrictive <laughs> as, as you grow because of course we're going to grow and be like a million dollar company and you know our chart of accounts that we started with will still be able to handle that all the way all the way through that that uh, journey